One of my favorite stories about servanthood came from this amazing guy, if you've, if you've studied church history, named Watchman Nee. And this is a true story. He's this amazing leader in communist China, was a Christian. And he had his, some of his limbs amputated. He's written so many really deep, profound books. Um, he was, later when he got out of prison, he ran a Christian commune over there. And um, a Life magazine American uh, journalist came to interview him, made an appointment, flew over it to China, came to the commune where they were all living. And when he came inside the gated area, he asked somebody, I have an appointment with Reverend Moon, watch my knee, pardon me, I got the wrong big guy, <laughs> not Moon, you know, and he's the wrong guy. And so he uh, said, can you help me know where I might find him? And they pointed to this guy. But the journalist was sure it wasn't the Watchman Nee, the famous Watchman Nee, because the guy was just hauling a wheelbarrow full of, man full of manure over to like a, a, a gardening patch where they, they grew vegetables and stuff. And so the journalist began walking and he kept walking and asking people uh, for where the, he might find Watchman Nee. And, and finally, once again, he was pointed specifically at that guy, though he'd walked quite a distance, they brought him back, who was pushing the wheelbarrow full of manure. So he walked up to him and he awkwardly said, pardon me, my name is, introduced himself, I'm from Life Magazine. I am told that you are Reverend Nee. Yes, young man. The man looked up from the wheelbarrow with the odor of stench of the manure coming out. And he said, if you'll just let me dump this last load uh, in this vegetable area, I'll be right with you. So he took care of all of that and left the, the empty wheelbarrow and started to walk back to a very humble little place. And when they got inside, finally the young uh, American reporter said, I, I just have to ask you a question before we start. I, I walked around for about 45 minutes trying to find you. They had pointed to you, but I was sure you weren't the watchman knee. You're the leader of all these people. You're the leader of the Christian world at this point in China. You're heroic. That's why Life Magazine sent me over here to do the interview with you. I couldn't believe that you would be pushing a wheelbarrow full of manure. And a watchman knee said in mortal words that every rispa who's ever going to do anything for God, especially in youth ministry, has got to know. He said, young man, they have made me their leader. And because of that, I have made myself their servant. kid that sent me the picture this morning in the text message 30 years ago. Ah, oh, guys, I'm not sure he remembers any of my messages, and I'm not undercounting the power of God's Word. It is tremendous. It's the only thing that brings life change, but the truth is they forget a lot of what we say. They just remember the Jesus that we lived in front of them. He was on a basketball team in Hananiga High School. His name's Dan, Dan Haid. I remember going to the game. He wasn't a starter, you know. Usually, especially senior year, they'd pull him off the bench near the end, you know. My biggest job was to make him feel like that pass that he made to somebody was good because there weren't a lot of baskets. His mom and dad had separated, and his mom had left. So when he called me mom, sometimes a little awkward to do it in front of some of his buddies, but I knew, I knew it was more than casual. I served more than controlled. Lots of times in, in leadership, 
We get ticked at them because they talk through service, they run in and out. And again, we need to, to put boundaries around that, around that stuff. I run a pretty tight ship in our youth ministry, so I'm not saying let them do whatever they want. I'm just saying to you, you don't have much room to correct much to be a real voice in their life unless you've done some of the serving things. And I bet you have, like giving them a ride home. You know, um, doing the little things that nowhere in youth ministry are you required to do. Making the telephone calls to check in on them when all they do is grunt back to you on the phone. And you feel stupid. I said to the pastoral staff today or last night, listen, if all of us, when you go into the youth service, are not so unselfishly friendly in our own way that we leave almost every time we're together feeling kind of dumb. Like we started so many conversations that they didn't much say back, you know, all of that stuff. That's part of servanthood, putting your own ego on the line. Encouraging other people when you wish somebody would encourage you. Listening to a kid whine about how her boyfriend just dumped her when you have a real problem going on at home and you think, I wish my biggest problem was I had a boyfriend that dumped me when I was a junior in high school. <laughs> and you're going, that much stink. I just found out my husband has cancer, but never mind about me. Let me, let me talk to you about your boyfriend. I mean, you don't say that, but you think it. Real rispas serve. All those non-glamorous things that nobody ever thanks you for. But Jesus will one day. Rispa, if you just don't quit.